Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our August 13th lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading out of the original edition, Lesson 225. God is my Father, and His Son loves Him. God is my Father, and His Son loves me. Loves Him. <laughs> loves me. <laughs> God is my Father, and His Son loves Him. Kind of similar to yesterday, wasn't it? God is my Father, and and he loves his son. Today, God is my father, and his son loves him. And that's capital son, because it's talking about the, uh, the connection that can't ever be changed, the one that love is eternal. Father, I must return your love for me. Father, I must return your love for me. Forgiving and receiving are the same. And you have given all your love to me. I must return it, for I want it mine in full awareness, blazing in my mind, keeping it within its kindly light, inviolate, beloved, with fear behind and only peace ahead, how still the way your loving son is led along to you. Brother, we find that stillness now. The way is open. Now we follow it in peace together. You have reached your hand to me, and I will never leave you. We are one, and it is but this oneness that we seek as we accomplish these final steps which end a journey that was not begun. <laughs> a journey that was not begun. We're going to end a journey that was not begun. I, I like what he says here, brother, we find that stillness now. The, you know that that stillness is what we're we're finding is the 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 road to to uh, eternity the the road to what's real what's true that stillness how's he say it blazing in my mind I must return it for I want it mine in full awareness blazing in my mind and keeping it within its kindly light, inviolate, beloved, with fear behind and only peace ahead. How still the way your loving son is led along to you. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting out here. Let's go ahead and turn to your, your text reading. And uh, while, you're, while you're turning there, let me tell you a minute, a moment about uh, this little plant right here. This is the chives, uh, garlic chives, a lot of people call it. Allium sconoprasum, sconoprasum, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, it, you know, I've been, I've been picking chives out of there. Uh, these little leaves at the bottom, can you see? I guess you can see, yeah, you can see that. Uh, these little leaves here at the bottom, uh, I usually cut them off quite a few at a time. Uh, but I just kind of let them grow, kind of watching. Here's one that's getting ready to open, little flowers on top. See, I don't know if you can see that real well. I guess I could break one off and show you a little better. Let's... How, how's that? <laughs> and, of course, that'll just go in the salad now. I, I could just eat all this, these things. Uh, garlic chives. High in vitamin K, good for bone health and for blood clotting ability. Uh, it's high in folate, which is B9, which is good for cell growth. I understand it's real good for, for uh, uh, pregnant mothers. Be sure to have lots of, of alliums. And I think they need to be raw. Most of the studies suggest that the raw is actually the more nutrient rich for these values. Uh, you know, I, I usually make it a point if I'm going to cook some onion in something to have some raw too. That's just my rule. Uh, I try to do that with all my foods as much as possible. Of course, you know, potatoes I don't think are all that good for you raw, but any of the foods that are are okay to eat raw, which would basically exclude things like um, don't don't most people don't suggest eating mushrooms raw. Uh, they need to be cooked, and, uh, and then potatoes. And, and beans, but uh, but you know all the other foods, just all, all your garden foods for the most part can be eaten raw. I had dinner with a friend last night, and she served me uh, uh, 
corn on the cob that was raw. And I, I, I liked it that way. Uh, anyway. Several studies suggest that all the alliums fight cancer. So, uh, wow, that's pretty neat. Uh, prevents osteoporosis. Uh, you know, it's good for your bone strength and bone health. And uh, also, it also, it's a study showing that it improves memory. So, chives, wonderful plant. Okay, let's see. Uh, creating versus the self-image. I hope it's not too bright for you all to see. I'm sure you can hear me just fine, but it's a little bright out here today. Yeah, I was standing in here in the sun. Creating versus the self-image. This is in paragraph 72 of uh, chapter 3. Every system of thought must have a starting point. It begins with either a making or a creating, a difference which we have discussed already. Their resemblance lies in their power as foundations. The difference lies in what rests upon them. Both are cornerstones for systems of belief by which men live. It is a mistake to believe that a thought system which is based on lies is weak. Nothing made by a child of God is without power. Very important concept. Nothing made by a child of God is without power. So even though your thought system is upside down and incorrect and, and actually um, not real, not true, it's still very powerful because you believe it. And he's going to develop this idea. So let's, let's listen to this. The difference lies in what rests upon them. Both are cornerstones for systems of belief by which men live. It is a mistake to believe that a thought system which is based on lies is weak. Nothing made by a child of God is without power. It is essential to realize this because otherwise you will not understand why you have so much trouble with this course and will be unable to escape from the prison which you have made for yourselves. So he wants us to understand how powerful our thoughts are. You cannot resolve the authority problem by depreciating the power of your minds. To do so is to deceive yourself, and this will hurt you because you know the strength of the mind. You also know that you cannot weaken it any more than you can weaken God. The devil is a frightening concept because he is thought of as extremely powerful and extremely active. He is perceived as a force in combat with God, battling him for possession of the souls he created. <laughs> he deceives by lies and builds kingdoms of his own in which everything is in direct opposition to God. You, he attract, oh, yet he attracts men rather than repels them. And they are seen as willing to, in quote, sell him their souls in return for gifts they recognize are of no real worth. <laughs> this makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> the whole picture is one in which man acts in a way he himself realizes is self-destructive, but which he does not choose to correct and therefore perceives the cause as beyond his control. We have discussed the fall or separation before, but its meaning must be clearly understood without symbols. The separation is not symbolic. It is an order of reality or a system of thought that is real enough in time, though not in eternity. All beliefs are real to the believer. All beliefs are real to the believer. 75. The fruit of only one tree was forbidden to man in his symbolic garden. But God could not have forbidden it, or it could not have been eaten. If God knows his children, and I assure you that he does, would he have put them in a position where their own destruction was possible? The tree which was forbidden was named the tree of knowledge. Yet God created knowledge and gave it freely to his creations. The symbolism here has been given many interpretations. 
but you may be sure that any interpretation which sees either God or his creations as capable of destroying their own purpose is an error. 76. Eating of the fruit of the tree of knowledge is a symbolic expression for incorporating into the self the ability to self for self-creating. Let's read that sentence again. Eating of the fruit of the tree of knowledge is a symbolic expression for incorporating into the self the ability for self-creating. This is the only sense in which God and his souls are not co-creators. The belief that they are is implicit in the self-concept, a concept now made acceptable by its weakness and explained by a tendency of the self to create an image of itself. Its fear aspect is often ascribed to fear of retaliation by a father figure, a particularly curious idea in view of the fact that no one uses the term to refer to the physical father. It refers to an image of a father in relation to an image of the self. 77. Images are perceived, not known. Knowledge cannot deceive, but perception can. Man can perceive himself as self-creating, but he cannot do more than believe it. He cannot make it true. And as we said before, when you finally perceive correctly, you can only be glad that you cannot. Let's read that again. Images are perceived, not known. Knowledge cannot deceive, but perception can. Man can perceive himself as self-creating, but he cannot do more than believe it. He cannot make it true. And as we said before, when you finally perceive correctly, you can only be glad that you cannot. But until then, the belief that you can is the central foundation stone in your thought system. And all your defenses are used to attack ideas which might bring it to light. You still believe you are images of your own creation. Your minds are split with your souls on this point, And there is no resolution why you believe the one thing that is literally inconceivable. That is why you cannot create and are filled, filled with fear about what you make. 78. The mind can make the belief in separation very real and very fearful, and this belief is the devil. The mind can make the belief in separation very real and very fearful, and this belief is the devil. It is powerful, active, destructive, and clearly in opposition to God because it literally denies his fatherhood. Never underestimate the power of this denial. Look at, your look at your lives and see what the devil has made. But know that this making will surely dissolve in the light of truth, because its foundation is a lie. 79. Your creation by God is the only foundation which cannot be shaken, because the light is in it. Your starting point is truth, and you must return to this beginning. Much has been perceived since then, but nothing else has happened. That is why your souls are still in peace, even though your minds are in conflict. You have not yet gone back far enough, and that is why you become so fearful. As you approach the beginning, you feel the fear of the destruction of your thought system upon you as if it were the fear of death. There is no death, but there is a belief in death. There is no death, <laughs> but there is a belief in death. And the last paragraph we'll read today, 80. The Bible says that the branch that bears no fruit will be cut off and will wither away. Be glad! The light will shine from the true foundation of life, and your own thought system will stand corrected. It cannot stand otherwise. You who fear salvation 
are willing death. Life and death, light and darkness, knowledge and perception are irreconcilable. To believe that they can be reconciled is to believe that God and man cannot. Only the oneness of knowledge is conflictless. Your kingdom is not of this world because it was given you from beyond this world. Only in this world is the idea of an authority problem meaningful. The world is not left by death, but by truth. The world is not left by death, but by truth. And truth can be known by all those for whom the kingdom was created and for whom it waits. <laughs> All right, isn't that wonderful? All right, let's go back to our lesson. God is my Father, and His Son loves Him. Lesson 225, and let's read, What is Forgiveness? Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. I encourage you to use that one often whenever you see things that that seem to not be loving, just remind yourself, forgiveness is what I want to do. And forgiveness recognizes what I thought my brother did to me has not even occurred. Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin. And in this view are all your sins forgiven. What is sin except a false idea about God's Son? Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. What then is free to take its place is now the will of God. An unforgiving thought is one which makes a judgment that it will not raise to doubt, although it is not true. The mind is closed and will not be released. The thought protects projection tightening its chains so that distortions are more veiled and more obscure, less easily accessible to doubt, and further kept from reason. What can come between a fixed projection and the aim that it has chosen as its needed goal? An unforgiving thought does many things. In frantic action it pursues its goal, twisting and overturning what it sees as interfering with its chosen path. Distortion is its purpose, and the means by which it would accomplish it as well. So an unforgiving thought does many things. In frantic action it pursues its goal, twisting and overturning what it sees as interfering with its chosen path. Distortion is its purpose, and the means by which it would accomplish it as well. It sets about its furious attempts to smash reality without concern for anything that would appear to pose a contradiction to its point of view. I had a closed mind. Forgiveness, on the other hand, is still and quietly does nothing. It offends no aspect of reality, nor seeks to twist it to appearances it likes. It's open-minded. It's not trying to, to reach a certain goal. It's able to step back and say, let truth be true. Forgiveness, on the other hand, is still and quietly does nothing. It offends no aspect of reality, nor seeks to twist it to appearances that it likes. It merely looks and waits, and judges not. <laughs> he who would not forgive must judge, for he must justify his failure to forgive. But he who would forgive himself must learn to welcome truth exactly as it is. Do nothing then, and let forgiveness show you what to do. Through him who is your guide, your savior and defender, strong in hope and certain of your ultimate success. He has forgiven you already, for such is his function given him by God. Now must you share his function and forgive whom he has saved, whose sinlessness he sees, and whom he honors as the Son of God. And our lesson, God is my Father, and His Son loves Him. The prayer, Father, I must return your love for me.
for giving and receiving are the same, and you have given all your love to me, I must return it, for I want it mine in full awareness, blazing in my mind, keeping it within its kindly light, inviolate, beloved, with fear behind and only peace ahead, how still the way your loving Son is led along to you. Brother, we find that stillness now. Brothers and sisters, we find that stillness now. The way is open. Now we follow it in peace together. You have reached your hand to me and I will never leave you. We are one, and it is what and it is but this oneness that we seek as we accomplish these few final steps which end the journey that was not begun. <laughs> God is my Father. God is my Father, and His Son loves Him. <laughs> 